up guys so today is earth hour uh, in australia uh, um, according to uh, australian eastern daylight times it's going to be at 8 30 pm i don't know if that's the same all around the world or what's going on there but that's the time uh, in new south wales at least uh, and so for this uh, i'm making this video of 21 things uh, you can do uh, during Earth Hour, so most of these things um, do not require any electronics of any kind, and the few that do uh, require uh, battery operated things. Um, so you're not actually using any uh, like power lines or anything. So let's get straight into this. Uh, I do also have at the end of this uh, six things just to sort of make this a full list of things you can do during the quarantine that we're in at the moment. Um, so if you want to take this list as that as well, uh, I have six things at the bottom of this list that uh, can uh, require um, an almost, I think there's only one here where you could potentially not have to use uh, um, like power lines and stuff and, and like wall plugs and whatnot uh, anyway so the first one on our earth hour list is and I was on the earth hour site itself and it said that earth hour doesn't necessarily have to be just that one hour period um, where you turn your lights off um, it can be a full day thing and you can make a full day of it uh, and so the first thing on my list because it's the first thing on their page uh, after you get past all of their like you know sign up and host or, uh, or whatever or log on here or turn your lights off first actual activity they have on their list which I think is fifth on their list uh, if, if memory serves me correctly the link's down below um, but go hiking is the one that they have for theirs. Uh, I'm putting cycling in here and just to sort of generally including any outdoors daytime exercise like physical activity. Um, you could also put um, playing a game of sport in here, um, but considering that hiking and cycling you can do on your own and most sports, you need at least one other person um, to play them, um, I'm not going to be including sport here, uh, if we weren't in a quarantine, sport will 100% go into this first slot. Um, so the second one on my list is a candlelit dinner, um, they recommend if you're going to do something like this to do all your prep. Um, before the the lights get switched off um, so this is mainly just the act purely of eating with candle with candlelight um, because for some people cooking could involve using the oven uh, or maybe your, uh, your stove top requires electricity uh, so um, yeah, the only way I can sort of see around this is if you have a, um, like a gas stove, I guess, um, and you were going to light it with, I don't know, maybe if you like use like a camping gas barbecue sort of thing, and you have to light it with a match or something, uh, I think that'd be the only way you'd be able to actually cook, um, or even uh, barbecuing maybe could also kind of go the same way um, but candlelight dinner number three board games or trivia night uh, for anything that I'm going to include where you will obviously need more than one person I am putting this into the context of whoever you are quarantining with um, but with things like board games and trivia um, you can get apps on your phone to play some of these games uh, I know that there's um, 
a trivia game that's kind of works the same way as Trivial Pursuit. I know you can get Yahtzee and Scrabble uh, and those sorts of ones on your phone. Um, so board games and trivia night uh, can be done just on your phone, which uses battery power. Um, but if we're talking actual uh, board games on the boards themselves, so things like chess as well, uh, I'm talking the actual physical games themselves, and it's within the context of whoever you're in quarantine with. Uh, number four, you can go stargazing. Um, and if you are like me, you know where a couple of um, constellations are. Um, um, for your uh, part of the world at this time of year, you know what constellations are in the sky above you right now. Um, you can make a bit of a game out of it to see who can, uh, like who else can find that particular one first. Uh, so for the mo at the moment, I can see uh, Aries, Taurus, uh, Orion, uh, Crux. Um, I think I almost found uh, Gemini the other day. Um, so that's the that's the sky that I have above me at the moment. Um, and so having a, making making it a bit of a game to sort of see if you can find where particular um, um, constellations are um, could be a, 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 an interesting way to pass the time. Number five, scrapbooking and arts and crafts. Especially if you have kids, this one's kind of a big thing. So obviously, get candlelight, see, see what you're doing, um, and then you either get some photos and make a nice little scrap page, um, or you can get out the uh, the, the paints and um, paper, pencils, all that sort of stuff, uh, and do some drawing, uh, painting have seen some uh, uh, articles say that you could do pottery and that sort of stuff as well um, and I guess that's all really up to you what you're comfortable with doing if you decide to do arts and crafts tonight. Uh, number six, in line with uh, doing scrapbooking and stuff, taking some nighttime photos and improving your uh, nighttime photography skills. Um, I can't speak for the newest iPhone, um, but I know that my generation iPhone does not have the greatest quality of nighttime photography. Um, so I would have to be using my DSLR uh, to do that. Um, but nighttime photography uh, would be a cool way to pass the time. You might be able to get some nice shots of uh, the stars and stuff above you. Um, if you are going um, to do nighttime photography, um, do try to keep in line with the, uh, the social isolation quarantine guidelines um, and, and don't be going out to like lookouts and stuff unnecessarily purely for photography. Um, this would be more or less a whatever you can photograph within walking distance. Uh, and probably going with only one or two people at a time um, to sort of keep in with that. Uh, number seven, gardening. Uh, the um, Earth Hour page itself uh, emphasized planting natives, uh, so any native plants that grow in your area, planting some of those. This got a thing that's fallen over and it doesn't want to stand up. Um, so yeah, um, planting natives that grow in your area, because obviously they're going to be able to grow pretty much without you having to do anything. Um, but even just starting like a little veggie garden or something um, that you can sort of like 
put in the corner of your yard or whatever. Um, because you should be able to set that up and, and, and plant the seeds and stuff without needing sunlight and whatnot. Because um, the sunlight and whatnot will come once the sprouts are actually coming through. Uh, number eight, read a book, is probably going to be one of the things that I do during Earth Hour. I have a candle somewhere over near my switch. I have a candle and I'm going to probably try to get through a couple of chapters of my book. Um, I did mention that I... I'm sure I've mentioned in a previous video that I want to get back into doing uh, reading. I have a whole bookshelf here full of uh, books, most of which I've read. Um, at this point, I can't remember exactly where in certain series I sort of stopped uh, so it's going to be a case of just trying to get through my entire bookshelf which is going to be fun um, so I'm already part way through this one so I might as well start there um, number nine having an at home spa day type thing um, what I mean by this is one of the sites I went on seemed to be directed specifically at women um, which is fine um, there are websites that are specifically targeted at men um, but it just sort of seemed weird that it was listed as a um, things to do like at home sort of thing with no power and that sort of thing and that home spa day sort of thing uh, had come up uh, and then all the other things afterwards just sort of reinforced that this was a women's only thing. But uh, what I mean by an at home spa day is you could have a, uh, a bath with some candlelight. If you really want to go fancy with it, you can have a glass of wine while you're doing it. Um, um, pop your book there as well, read, what, um, read your book or whatever. Um, if you've got um, a, a portable device that you can listen to audiobooks on, you can do that as well. Um, then once you've done that, uh, doing like manicures, pedicures, uh, if you've got someone uh, with you, you could probably uh, give each other massages or something, um, and really just like full pamper yourself and just have a bit of a relaxing time in this hour. Use this hour to not only switch off your lights, but switch off your brain and just relax for a bit. Um, is sort of the, the, the sentiment behind this one. Number 10, doing puzzles or origami. Uh, by puzzles, I mean like crosswords, uh, finder words, Sudoku, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, again, there's a whole heap of apps you can get on your phone if you want to do that. Uh, and I've thrown origami in here because it just seemed to, uh, I, I mean, probably would have fit in better with arts and crafts, but um, I don't know. Most of the, the puzzles these days are um, Japanese logic puzzles like Sudoku, Kokoro, um, there's a whole bunch of other ones and not all of them use numbers um, and origami being uh, paper folding and it, in and of itself being its own sort of puzzle uh, seemed to fit with that a bit more. Number 11, uh, I'm gonna restart the count now at one. Number 11, uh, having a home workout. Um, so I've got an app on my phone where I can put in uh, what exercises I want to do and just simply just do an at-home workout. Um, if you put this with your um, physical exercise from number one and do a run as well, you, can, you could essentially make the entire hour just a, um, like a full body workout. Mm. 
excuse me, um, assuming you've got the, uh, the equipment at home, um, don't go to the gym. This is specifically an at-home workout. Uh, number 12, clearing out and reorganizing your wardrobe. Something that I know I need to do. Um, uh, and so for this, you'd be going through, pulling out all your clothes, only putting back the ones that you actually wear, like only putting back the clothes you actually use. And then if your other clothes are still in good condition, you can then donate them. Um, so sort of like just put them in like a bag or whatever. And then tomorrow morning, go and donate them. Um, and it then means that, especially with, uh, at the moment we're coming into winter here, so Northern Hemisphere is going into summer, this is sort of a, a good time to uh, get in and reorganize your cupboard for the season we're coming into. So I would be pulling out all of my jumpers and stuff and putting away all of my singlets and swimwear. Um, number 13, start a DIY project. Um, this really could be anything at all. Um, I don't really have much to say on this. I'm My DIY projects generally are whenever I get new furniture. Um, and I don't have any new furniture to work on, so I don't really have anything to add to this one. But starting a DIY project could be something that you uh, get into. Uh, number 14, doing some meditation or yoga or Pilates. Um, uh, particularly with like the yoga and Pilates stuff, this could be part of that uh, workout one that I was talking about before, but um, specifically with meditation in mind with these, this is more of a um, mindfulness um, exercise rather than a physical muscle exercise. Number 15, uh, simply just sitting back, having a drink and talking to whoever it is you are quarantined with. Um, you could go so far here as to call family members and if you're going to video call, um, you may even end up in like a bit of a conference call sort of thing with all of your other family members or you know, a couple of different friends and you all just organize that from 8.30 to 9.30 you're all just going to conference, conference video call each other and you'll each just have a couple of drinks and talk and catch up. Um, and yeah, there, that, there's a couple options there. Um, if you're going to be calling family, make sure that you sort of prioritise older relatives, see how they're going in all of this. Um, and then after them, anyone with young children or uh, immunocompromised people um, because obviously they're the ones most at risk right now. Um, number 16, you could simply just go camping. You could pack up the car. It's a Saturday, so you could pack up the car during the day, go out somewhere where no one's around and go camping. Uh, I don't know uh, if this is one is technically allowed by quarantine, but it is still an idea. Um, and I mean, if you're camping somewhere where no one else is around, personally, I don't see how it's not allowed. Uh, but again, it could still fall under the going out for no particular reason sort of thing. Um, so sort of uh, gauge that one how you will. Number 17, playing indoor sports. Um, now by this I don't mean going out to an indoor sports place, I mean playing um, some games, in, like some sports in your own house. Um, this could include, um, and you can get a whole bunch if, if you have them, um, 
but you can get um, like plastic bowling kits. You can get the little soccer balls and you might sort of move the furniture out of the way, have a little game of, of, uh, of soccer or whatever. Or this could also include things like playing uh, billiards or air hockey or any like the table sports like ping pong, those sorts of things. Um, there's a whole heap of indoor sports you could play. Um, so yeah, uh, number uh, 18, um, having an in-home open mic night, um, which you could include in this uh, doing uh, karaoke, um, or maybe even doing your own like in-house little uh, comedy festival or something like that. Um, uh, you might even have uh, allow it to be a bit more like a talent show sort of thing with a bit of both uh, as well as like some poetry reading maybe some dramatic performance uh, that sort of thing um, with karaoke um, getting a bluetooth speaker to play the music uh, and then uh, using your mobile device um, getting the um, lyrics up on your phone so you can sort of sing along with it um, would be how I would recommend doing that uh, but you can also get uh, karaoke uh, like at home karaoke machines I'm not sure if they're required to be plugged into the wall or not so again this one's a bit of an iffy one number 19 almost at the end here um, you could get your journal out and make some, uh, like write down some eco-friendly resolutions. The night is all about uh, trying to uh, reduce our carbon footprint. So you might stay in that same vein and try to just see what other areas you could uh, be more sustainably minded in. And this could be things such as reducing plastic usage. Um, so you can buy metal straws, um, and if you buy you know, a couple, you might keep one at home, put one in your car for when you're out. Um, uh, ladies might put one in their handbag um, so that it's always within reach. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, you might make a resolution to, if it's within reason, uh, walking or riding to work. Um, obviously, if you're in the city, you need to catch a train that would be taking uh, walking or riding to uh, your station instead of driving there um, and then uh, this could also include uh, using sustainably sourced products uh, there's usually some sort of seal uh, or, or like um, mark on them to let you know that that particular product is sustainably sourced uh, and it doesn't you know it might uh, use less water or the packaging is uh, recycled um, or a whole heap of other things um, but there's just some ideas for some eco-friendly resolutions number 20 is um, you could simply just write things uh, some of these things could include you might write a short story or a poem you might write some song lyrics um, for an original song, obviously just writing down the lyrics to your favourite song. Um, I, I mean, you could if you wanted to, but writing original song lyrics um, um, could be kind of cool. Uh, writing your to-do list for the next day, the next week, the next month, um, whatever. Uh, simply just writing a journal entry on what you did today there's a whole bunch of gratitude journals that you can get these days and they sort of walk you through what your journal entry should look like um I'm, i've got my eye on a couple of uh gratitude journals at the moment uh, and i'm uh slowly going through the list and trying to get them um you could uh write your travel bucket list yeah, you could write your, uh, your travel bucket list, so you might list the places you want to go 
what you want to see when you go there, that sort of thing. Uh, and obviously, this allows you to start planning your next trip while all the uh, um, airports and stuff are shut because it's highly likely that those prices will be uh, reduced a little bit um, once they open up again in order to get people back in and traveling again um, to uh, help bring that, uh, get, put uh, more money into the travel industry. Um, so planning that, the, that, that next trip now could come in handy so that you can go straight in as soon as uh, travel agents and airports and stuff are open book it and just go uh, or you could do uh, some meal planning um, and if you're going to do some meal planning you may even decide to uh, do some prep assuming that your prep doesn't need uh, electricity so things like uh, cutting vegetables and that sort of thing um, so yeah so uh, number 20 is writing and there's a whole heap of things obviously there that you can do uh, and then number 21 last one on the list is learn a new skill now this could be something as simple as again getting your mobile device whether that's a tablet or a phone um, and pulling up YouTube and literally typing in um, how to and whatever it is you want to learn. So some ideas here are learning to knit or crochet, uh, learning a second language, uh, learning a new instrument. Personally, if I was going to do this one, I would be wanting to learn how to actually uh, make um, EVA foam armor um, for like cosplay and stuff. Um, I have a whole heap of characters on my uh, list at the moment and a couple of them have some really um, cool armor pieces that I would want to put into my uh, cosplay obviously putting my own twist into them uh, so for instance one of these characters is a steampunk version of Professor Plum from Cluedo um, and so I would want to know how to uh, make sort of like some steampunk uh, armor pieces to go over the top of his um, Sort of suit that he would would be in as a professor uh, as well as potentially even making uh, I would have him have the wrench considering that he's like a scientist uh, slash engineer sort of thing uh, so I'd give him the wrench as his like weapon that he used um, and I'd want to sort of make it sort of like a two-handed weapon sort of thing um, so that would be what I'd be into um, but again, whatever skill you decide to learn, you could do that yourself. Uh, there is also, and this is not sponsored, but there is also uh, Skillshare, um, which I've seen a whole heap of YouTubers that I follow, they get sponsored by uh, Skillshare every now and then. Um, and they have, they have a whole heap of things you could learn on there. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the 21 things that you could do during Earth Hour, obviously. Um, you're going to be really hard pressed to try and fit all of those things in at once uh, unless you're doubling up on a couple of things um, so yeah um, I mean that sounds like a bit of a challenge honestly to try and do all 21 things uh, within the hour uh, maybe next year I'll do that I'm going to keep this note saved and maybe next year that's what I'll do for uh, Earth Hour 2021. Um, to finish this off, I will give you those uh, six um, um, quarantine activities that do require power. Um, so these are not ones that I would recommend you do during Earth Hour. Um, but TV and streaming. Um, so watching TV or watching Netflix, Disney Plus, uh, Amazon Prime, Stan, uh, Foxtel, Hulu, um, whatever. Uh, Freeform, I think it's one, the um, CW Seed, all that sort of stuff. Um, 
the, the little caveat here is that you could, if you have the app on your phone or on your tablet, watch it on that, and in that way you can still just binge an entire, you, you, you know, you might be able to, to, to uh, depending on the length of, of episodes, you could just continue your, uh, your Netflix binge during the hour. Uh, and be that, and that be the only thing you do during the time. That's up to you. Um, you could uh, start a blog. Um, the web, the the article website list thing that I had read, where this was one of the suggestions, had said that WordPress is sort of the recommended place to start a blog. Um, so you could look into doing that. Um, baking or literally any kind of cooking that's going to require electricity um, but baking um, and obviously putting these into the context of the whole um, quarantine if you bake say some muffins and some cookies and stuff it means that you don't have to go out to the shops in order to get something to eat like some snacks or whatever for a Netflix binge because you've cooked them yourself uh, this also means that you can have exactly whatever flavor you want to have um, instead of having to choose someone else's pre-made uh, flavor um, depending on what's left in the shelves after people panic buy um, and yeah so it means that you can just stay at home and make your your snacks and then take them in while they're still fresh and continue your Netflix binge um, or your movie marathon uh, I was surprised that none of the lists that I read and I read like three or four of them this morning I was surprised that none of them had movie marathon on there I mean I, I suppose that it's kind of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for inferred I believe it's inferred that I'm looking for um, but I, I think it's kind of inferred from um, uh, like streaming and, and having a Netflix binge. But a movie marathon, you don't necessarily need a subscription to any of those things. You might just have a nice collection of Disney movies, or you might be like me and have the entire extended edition box set of Lord of the Rings, which is going to take you 12 hours to watch. Um, and that might be your... You know, like the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, just just the Lord of the Rings trilogy, not including the Hobbit in this, because uh, if you've got the full editions of those, like the extended editions of those, that's another nine hours, um, which really starts to just take up the entire day to the point of um, you would be extremely uh, tired by the time you finished watching it all. Um, but just the just the Lord of the Rings is going to take you a full day. Um, and each movie is spread across two discs, at least with this um, edition that I've got. Um, so you can actually, uh, in between discs, get up and get some food or go to the toilet and, and have breaks in that way. Um, and then the last one I've got on my list is uh, video games. Um, obviously playing video games, if you're gonna do, uh, you, uh, especially if you're going to play online would be the way that I would suggest you play with your friends assuming those friends have the same console I had a friend who had a PlayStation 4 like me and we were able to play online and then something happened um, and instead of just replacing it um, he got himself an Xbox fully knowing that new consoles are coming out later this year um, so, yeah, hopefully I can talk him into getting a PlayStation 5 when that comes out. Because uh, at the moment, that's currently my plan, is to get a PlayStation 5. Um, knowing that it's backwards compatible with all the games I've already got for my 4. Um, but, yeah. Um, and then, um, the, uh, the other one out of the 6, if you've been paying close enough attention, I know that I've only mentioned 5 here. The other one out of my six was Calling Family. Um, reason I put this in the 
requires electricity section is that for the most part I've found that or at least as far as uh, my family sort of works the older people in my family have cordless landlines so it's just like the the charging station has to plug in but the phone itself has its own battery power um, but you might have someone who just has like the full corded uh, landline from back in the day um, I admit that that's highly unlikely but it's still a possibility um, and then things like uh, nursing homes and stuff I believe that they'd have uh, landlines for each particular room depending on who you wanted to talk to um, so this one sort of sits in there um, but by all means if they have mobiles and you have their mobile number call them on the mobiles um, that's a hundred percent an okay thing to do during birth hour um, but yeah that's all I've got for today if you've made it this far through the video thank you so much it means uh, so much to me um, if you uh, like this video um, or you think that I'm, uh, there's some things in here that you might do during birth hour uh, later tonight then give this video a thumbs up um, also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to see more videos from me and be notified when I upload new ones um, the link to the Earth Hour um, site will be down below as well as I'm going to put in uh, the list that I've got below as well um, I, I mean I've mentioned that many other um, websites and, and services and stuff that if I was just to list them all I wouldn't even get this video up in time um, so yeah so um, I'll leave my list down below uh, as well as the Earth Hour website um, if you want to check those out as well um, and yeah so until next time guys keep it screwed on